most of us now live in towns and cities where gardens are often quite small and we're surrounded by buildings. Now while the built environment poses certain challenges, busy roads for hedgehogs to cross for example, urban gardens are actually hotspots for wildlife. Today I'm going to show you how you don't have to live in the country or even have a large garden to do your bit. With just a little thought, even the tiniest of urban plots can welcome wildlife and be a rewarding place for us too. Don't worry about not having acres of lawn. Even a patch of grass the size of a postage stamp is enough to make yourself a mini meadow. Just mow a path through the middle or keep the edges short. Green woodpeckers will love to hunt for ants in those parts while leaving the rest to grow tall. Support your pollinating insects by letting some of the lawn weeds flower or if you prefer, you can plant in some wildflower plug plants instead. If the grasses in your lawn are a bit too vigorous and are not letting the wildflowers come through, there's a simple fix for that. A lovely little flower called yellow rattle can be sown into the lawn and this is semi-parasitic on the grass and so will help to suppress its vigour. Shade is really common in small gardens, especially along boundaries and hedge lines. Dense conifer hedges like this slow growing yew harbour all sorts of spiders and invertebrates and also make a great nesting site for blackbirds. Open planted boundaries rather than fences or walls means that it's easy access for hedgehogs and other animals which can freely come and go. It's also a handy spot to discreetly place a log pile. When it comes to water in the garden, we need to think small too. You don't need a big pond, instead opt for a small bird bath like the stone one we've got down here, or make a little mini water feature out of an old Belfast sink or a trug. All I'm going to do is just get a couple of bricks, pop those into the bottom of the trug. I've got a couple of moisture loving plants here. This lovely purple loose strife, this will bring in the bees straight away. And then alongside it, I've got some water mint. In not very long time, this is going to come into flower and lure in the butterflies and the moss. So all we're going to do is just stand these in. They'll sit on the bricks so they're raised up a little bit in the water. That looks good there. I think if we pop this one over here, and I've probably got a little bit of space for a third one. These will all fill out, so don't worry too much if it looks a little sparse to begin with. That's quite nice. Now, ideally, fill your trug with rainwater in preference to tap water. And remember to allow frogs some sort of access so they can get in and out. I've just got a little old piece of um, uh, wood here, so I'm just going to slip this in. There we go. And the only thing that's left to do is chop up with water. Urban gardens are often warmer, more sheltered places than larger exposed rural gardens, meaning that we can get away with a wider range of more tender plants and that wildlife is active for longer. There's loads of potential in an urban garden. We just need to maximise it. If you have lots of hard surfaces, see if you can use gravel as a pathway and plant fruit with ground cover plants like thyme and erigerin. Plant up pots, window boxes and baskets with pollinator friendly plants such as snapdragon, fairy tote flax and single flowered marigolds. This red tender geranium probably won't attract much for the insects but don't worry it's a superb splash of colour all summer long and so this mixed container gives us the best of both worlds. Think about vertical planting. With narrow borders, create wigwams with climbers on. This increases the habitat potential. A porch lends itself to yet more climbers and is also a great place for hanging bird cedars. And if you haven't space for a tree, how about going for an espaliered apple? Bees enjoy it at blossom time and we get to enjoy the fruit. Whatever the aspect, house and shed walls are great places for putting up all sorts of nest boxes. House sparrows and starlings will quite often find their own space up under the eaves or under the tiles in the roof space. But 
There's boxes for all sorts of birds, including one that's just tucked out of sight round the corner here. When placing bee hotels, choose a sunny wall, but find a shady wall instead for bat boxes. Bats, when they're roosting, prefer cooler conditions. And of course, bats and their prey, such as moss, become disorientated with artificial lighting. Help them out by using low intensity lights, such as this solar powered garden light. Urban gardeners can be more adventurous with their planting, safe in the knowledge that many tender plants are gonna make it safely through the winter. Hebes, salvias, alerias, fuchsias and dahlias are all great choices. Look out for the single flowered dahlias, ones such as Bishop of Landaff and the Happy Single series. By flowering right up to the first frost, these exotic plants provide for bees and butterflies and work hard in a small space for gardeners. Small gardens are a wonderful place to get really close to garden wildlife. So take a fresh look at your plot and see if you too can make it a hotspot for wildlife in your town or city.